you. Are you ready for battle? Yes. Betting there's a good number of you out there thinking, I kind of remember that. And even more of you asking, what the fuck is that? Well, this is a pox. You're probably waiting for me to explain what that stands for. Literally nothing. I searched for way too long to try to find a meaning behind that name and just found the search results as empty as I am on the inside. That being said, leave your best guess in the comments. I'll even pin some of my favorites. My best guess? Personal Overt Xenomorph. Now, back in 2001, this product was tested, marketed, and then taken off the market. Yes, all of that within a year. Who made this thing? Ah, Hasbro. I'm sure this isn't the last time we'll hear that name on this channel. They first tested the system in Chicago with a viral marketing campaign that I absolutely love. They went to schools and skate parks and asked the kids who they thought the coolest person they knew was, who the coolest kid they knew was. And the kids that answered that they were the coolest kids they knew, those were the ones that got the system. It's just, that's just great. I mean, it worked out well for them. Uh, it got a lot of positive feedback, I guess. They were going to test it in nine other areas beyond Chicago, but instead moved forward with a full launch uh, at the insistence of some higher-ups at Hasbro, as well as Toys R Us. Remember them. They hopped on board right after the test in Chicago, and were a huge reason that they pushed for the September 23rd, 2001 launch. You can probably see where this is going, but before we talk about why the game was taken off the market, let's talk about the game itself. There are three versions, as you can see. Psychro, Plasmo, and Spino. The gameplay is the same for each version. The main differences are the stats your alien creature is focused on and the body parts available to you in the game to customize them. To quote the manual, the red Spino have strength, power, and force. The green Psychro have speed, agility, and stealth. The blue Plasmo have deception, defense, and camouflage. So, the story in the game is that these three alien species were discovered after crashing to Earth on a meteorite the same year of release. The device itself is supposed to be some kind of containment unit for your pox infector. Yes, that is actually what they're referred to as. Can I already see why this might be taken off the market? The controls are probably the easiest thing to comprehend in this game. And even they can be a bit confusing. There's a D-pad for navigating the menus and levels. The top button to access the menu. The second button is the action or confirm button. And the bottom button is the cancel button. There's a power button that puts the system in and out of sleep mode. And a send button that is used to battle other pox infectors. On the back of the unit, there's a reset that can be easily accessed. As well as a weird looking mechanism used for the battery slot. When you need to change the batteries, you have 30 seconds to do so, otherwise you'll lose all your data. First, remove the screw. Then with the new batteries in hand, flip the switch open and take the back plate off. Quickly switch the batteries. Replace the back plate and flip the switch back to closed. 
you can then screw it back in without much worry, and everything should be saved as long as you were really quick. The reason it's a bit of a pain is that while there is an onboard battery, it's incredibly small, giving you a tiny window of time to switch the batteries. It does give you a heads up if your batteries are running low, but if you don't have any on hand, then you're pretty much boned. When you boot it up, you get this logo screen and sick rave music. I'd love to remix that. Honestly. The sound design is pretty good here. It's fitting for the game and the overall design. The first time you boot it up, you have to input your name, followed by inputting an ID for your POX containment unit, or PCU, which is used to distinguish yourself in the RF battling system. If you and your friend both have one of these, then don't use the same ID name or else they won't be able to recognize each other and you'll be unable to battle. After that, you go to the forge where you make your infectors by selecting body parts you've unlocked. There's heads, bodies, and tails. At the start, you'll have three options of each available. They all look identical, but have different effects in combat. You'll have to have the manual on hand to see what those effects are. There are five head designs total, eight bodies, seven tails, and each of those designs has three different variants for combat, as well as one body part that appears to have three different effect variations that are blocked out in the manual as classified, yet they have the numbers listed. These all have to be unlocked in the single player arena mode. When in the forge, you can select the attack pattern you'll use in battles, though you'll select this before fights in the arena, so it's for use in the RF battles, really. The attack system is pretty weird. You have three attack phases and three columns for each attack phase, with, at, and defend. You select the body part for each column during the attack phase. For example, attack with the tail at the opponent's head and I'll defend my infector's body this phase. Then repeat that process two more times and pick a name for your infector. Over the course of the game you can build and have four infectors stored in the system and can't delete the infector that has brackets around it. Now, those body parts with their different effects and battles sometimes are activated by or during combat with species of pox infectors during RF battles, as indicated by the letters beside the body parts number. I don't know how this affects their activation in the arena mode, though some of these body parts are activated when fighting infectors of the same species, and I assume the infectors in the arena are the same species as the infectors you make since you collect the body parts unique to your species during the arena. Either way, this is the battle page in the manual. That's way too much for me as an adult, and I can only imagine how many kids just flipped right past the instruction booklet. So, instead of studying to be able to play the game, I'm just going to do what I did when I was a kid and brute force the thing. I'll take more notes of the effects and complexity of the system when I actually get into RF battling, and I'm sure I'll grasp it along the way. But I mean, damn, that's way too convoluted. Now, even before getting into the arena gameplay and showing you what that's like, I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna be a slog. First off, when you beat the boss in an arena level referred to as the Overspore, you get to choose from three different body part effect variations. This means you have to play each level three times and beat the overspore to get each one of them in your library. There are 17 levels in the arena. That's 51 right there. But that's not quite the end of it yet. Remember that there's three species of these things and that I have all three of them. So that brings us up to 153. Let's make that even more fun on top of it. Seeing as how I don't have the patience to learn the mechanics or effects. Let's throw on the fact that if you lose in the arena, it's going to be a slog just to get back to where you were battling. So, this is going to be an absolute chore that luckily you don't have to sit through most of. Look at you. When you enter a level in the arena, this stargate looking thing is the portal that your character entered the level in, and you'll find these weird windsock looking things that are referred to in the manual 
as pylons, and they're just here for scenery to help you not get lost in the samey maze-like design. There are also these tube-shaped things that are called cryopods, and contain either poison that hurts you, a battle, sometimes a key, or currency that is creatively called cur. This can be used in the body regeneration shop, which is a crab-like building that you can use to obtain healing proteins and hit points for your infector. These doors that are sometimes hidden are locked and must be opened by finding keys or clearing out opponents, as well as there's spots in the walls that you can break open by running into that have areas you'll have to access. Before you can fight the Overspore, you have to complete all the tasks for the level. This means clearing out the enemies and collecting all the keys. The levels aren't too hard to progress in, but it can take some time to get all the way through them because of how long and poorly designed the maze-like levels are. And the battles. Oh lord, the battles! This here is the breaking point of the game. Ultimately, it lives or dies on the battle system. Is it fun or not? No. It's not fun. It's boring as sin. There are no words accurate enough to describe the level of boring. Here, take a look! To compare it to the game craze it clearly wanted to emulate, at least Pokemon battles taken without the lush world and gameplay, they have flourished during battles and different things and visuals for the moves, even when they were at their most basic. And you also get to pick something different each round. Here you're locked into three attack phases, and each attack is pretty much the same animation no matter which body part you attack with. It just all looks the same, and it gets old fast. That being said, I am definitely not beating all of these. And getting every body part, but I just don't have the patience for that. But I do have a goal here. My plan is to beat Psychro, getting at least two body parts per level, meaning I'll have to play the levels twice. Plasmo, playing the levels only once, and play at least a couple levels of Spino. Still gonna be a heck of a task that I'm not gonna drag you through every level of. Instead, here's a montage of my playthrough of these. And here's the final boss from the Psycho version, which of course was a drag to get to. There you go. Good and anticlimactic after all these years. As for the RF battles, here they are. Just as boring. Even if I was battling with a buddy who had trained up their infector, it would still be boring as fuck. First, you both had to have the RF switched on in the options menu, then hold the send button to send out your pox to another system. It then shows up in their system as an intruder, and they have to beat them to proceed. And beware, an intruder that remains in your system after the battle clock runs down and disappears, but it also deactivates one of the body parts in your library. You have to play the arena level that you collected that body part in to reactivate it. Ties in intruder battles result in the infector being sent back to its system. If you win, you take the intruder to stasis. You can store up to eight intruders in stasis and either purge them from your system or dissect them and get a new body part. If you have the body part, it's indicated by a dot. An up arrow means that it has better hit points than your currently equipped body part. And a down arrow means that it has less. Another feature that is really interesting and has tons of potential is just wasted by how boring the battles are. Let's talk a little bit about my personal connection with these things. 
When I was a kid at my dad's on the weekends, my cousins used to come over. And one weekend, their grandmother came over with a bunch of these things. And even though she's not, blo like, in any way, shape, or form related to myself or my brother, after she had my cousins pick one, we got to pick one ourselves. I picked the Plasmo. And this one here is actually the exact one I used to have as a kid. The other two I bought for the review and to complete the set. At the time, I didn't have any sort of handheld, so it was pretty great having this thing. Especially having competition for it right off the bat. But it really didn't take long for me to get bored of the thing, only like two weeks. And after that I really only brought it on long car rides. At one time on the highway I managed to link up with somebody, in a uh, random stranger for a battle, and that was pretty awesome. But I put the thing away in a box for years and haven't thought of the thing until we're going to do this review. They were taken off the market pretty quickly after their introduction in 2001, since Hasbro had gotten several complaints from parents who felt uncomfortable with their children playing a game in which they infected each other's systems and battled with bug-like alien viruses. It raised concerns with the higher-ups after September 11th of that year and the threat of anthrax at the time. And honestly, I never thought to link those two as a kid. That's probably why I got one when I did as a kid. They were probably in the reduced bin, basically, when, when they got them. Even if there wasn't any controversy, I really don't think these things would have remained anything for long. I think they still would have just kind of faded out real quick. Because the... The, the battles are just so boring, and the system is so convoluted, it's way too convoluted for a kid. It's not going to hold their attention span. So I think this being taken off the market, in the end of the day, was, was a good a decision. Are you an adult who plays Pokemon and knows how to break the game through minute details, breeding, and Pokemon characteristics, and looking for something a little more unnecessarily complex? Well, then you're one of the few people I might be able to recommend this for. If you had one of these as a kid and just want to get it for the nostalgia kick, they're easy to find and they're relatively cheap. But the minute you play the thing, the rose tinted glasses are going to fall off and you're just going to be bored to tears. Now, they might increase in value over time, seeing as how they were taken off the market relatively suddenly. But the fact that they got around before that happened pretty consistently makes me think that's not likely to be the case. It was a neat concept with some interesting lore behind it, but it just fell so short in execution. So much wasted potential here. Although, I'm glad to have all three of them to have a full collection, even if I'm never gonna use the damn things. Thanks for tuning in today and listening to me groan about a handheld that I used to have when I was a kid. You know the deal. Subscribe, all that shit. It does help a lot. And let me know if you have any personal memories with the POC system. And don't forget to tell me what you think POC stands for in the comments below. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something. Have a great one everybody. His name is Roach, that don't look like a fucking Roach to me. Fucking dude, I'm fighting. Might as well be a cockroach. <laughs> Shit's invincible. I can drop a nuke on this bitch and he ain't gonna die. Also, I have the urge to stomp on him. Fuck <laughs> me. Uh, really right there, I'm fighting the boss on this level right now. I'm still fighting the first guy. You're still fighting the first guy? <laughs> I, I, I killed two people already. What the fuck? I've been fighting this dude for like 10 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> He's blocked literally like everything, even though I've hit him like six times. Mm -hmm. He's hit me once for a point. What did you go in with loadout? Did you just all spam one thing? Like I, I didn't did. know what the hell I was setting up. <laughs> <laughs> first, first fucking couple fights I did, that's all I did was just H H H H H H H H H. We're going all yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're shooting from your head, uh, at your head, and blocking for your head. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Fuck you. You know what, Price? That's pretty fucking rude. You act like I was excited I to play. I can't. I can't even play. I'm kind of mad about that because all I could do is replay. Yeah, that's even gonna be me before it crashed. Just that replay. Hey, what?
fucking freeze your fuck out. Hey, replay. Yeah, apparently we already fought. So the game just took the fight and fuck me. Look at that fucking giant poxy on there. Just fuck me. Look at that big pox. <laughs> My pox is a little green. That's probably not good. I think you should see the dog there. Yo, yo, dude, is, is it cool? Just take a look at my pox real quick. Oh, oh. That's normal. Fuck that pox fight. Pox. You're a <laughs> pox, dude. That's herpes. I waited like... Oh, shit, dude. You got the clap. <laughs> Thank you.